guys for my little out breath. Try to get a little workout in. Yeah, sometimes you got to sweat it out. Yeah, sometimes you got to take at least 30 minutes for yourself, right? You sweat more when you work out or when you go? You know what? A little bit of both. I sweat when my sleep, so, you know, it doesn't take me much. <laughs> Mike, you have um, – it's an interesting senior class. you got a guy who's been here a long, long time, played a lot of games, and then three guys who came in so late. Um, from your perspective, being around, just just what are you going to take away from, from this group? Well, uh, like you said, you know, eight newcomers, uh, not a lot of stability in terms of our senior class, but good guys, really good kids that in a rough year uh, I thought did their best to come together and tried to make the best of a rough situation and uh, – you know, it's never easy when you don't have guys that you can build from freshman year on up. But I think these guys have really come together and become really good friends. And I think that's the most memorable thing about playing college ball is building those long-lasting friendships and relationships. Mike, I know he'll be there tomorrow, but will Malik play tomorrow in the game? Yeah, Malik will start tomorrow. That's the plan. My intention is to start all four seniors. Uh, give those guys the opportunity to start and go out the way that they deserve. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. Hopefully the seniors can bring some magic to the young on, on their last game at home. And uh, look forward to seeing all those guys out there together. It's Mike, what a... was his reaction or, like, how did he handle his second, I guess, if you want to call it suspension, after not making a trip to Virginia Tech? Uh, you know, we just had a, a brief talk. You know, I think that by now, I would like to think that Malik understands that, you know, there's some things that have to happen. Uh, anytime you run an organization, a, a basketball program, especially one as prestigious as Louisville, we all have to conduct ourselves the right way. And, uh, you know, hopefully Malik understands that, even, even if he doesn't understand it now. I hope he understands it later in life. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, I've said this before, sometimes you bump heads, um, you know, in a family setting, in a setting like this, you know, we, we, we aren't always going to agree. You know, it's just how it goes. And uh, it's unfortunate to some extent, but hopefully it's a life lesson and something that we can build from and build on going forward. Mike, given sort of the ups and downs of his year, how do you hope people respond to him tomorrow? Well, I hope they, you know, he's a, he's a kid. He's not a professional, you know, and I hope they treat him as such. Um, you know, for a young man to have four different head coaches in his time, uh, that's unprecedented here, unprecedented in all of college basketball. And it's unfortunate, and it certainly left uh, an indelible mark, scar on him, I think. And uh, he struggled through that, as anybody would. And so I would hope our crowd wouldn't hold that against him and would give him a round of applause and, and cheer for him and the rest of our guys as we try to, to beat a really good UVA team tomorrow afternoon. Speaking of UVA, obviously a big challenge for you guys, and they've kind of had Louisville's number of late. Um, what goes into preparing for, for a unique style of ball that they have? Well, you know, we all know how UVA plays. You know, they're going to slow that thing down and make you go off for 30 seconds. And I think that's the most important thing uh, tomorrow in terms of our game plan is to see if we can sustain our defensive patience and concentration throughout the possession. Uh, they make you concentrate and defend and work and communicate well into the shot clock. And that's something that we've always talked about. Uh, especially as of late, I think that that's plagued us. Uh, certainly hurt us against Virginia Tech and other teams here recently. But UVA is the you know the ultimate challenge when it comes to that. And I would like to see our guys be able to really improve in that area and stay with it and have five guys be committed to finishing possessions, uh, whether it be you know not running into a screen late in the five sec late late in the shot clock, uh, whether it be running down a loose ball, getting a defensive rebound, you know a guard cracking down on the big guy and getting a block out. Just, you know, I, I tell these guys, I was like, I have no idea, fellas, why we wouldn't reward ourselves with finishing a possession when you guard for 20, 25 seconds. Like, reward yourselves. Finish the possession. Uh, let's get that ball and let's run and let's speed them up and see if we can't get them to play our game. Mike, what do you, what do you think you'll take away from both of your interim experience that will help you as a head coach in the future? Well, I tell you what, I enjoyed the first one more than this one. <laughs> Close what I was saying. I uh, had a little more time to prepare for that one than I did this one. And uh, but you know what? It is all such a blessing. You know, as I'm running up there on the treadmill uh, early today, and many other times throughout this this tough time, 
I'm, I always remind myself that it's a blessing to be here. You know, not many people can say they've been the head coach of Louisville basketball, and I'm one of them. And despite the, the record, and again, I'm not proud of that at all, uh, but uh, it's something that's been a really rewarding experience, something that I'll, I'll definitely learn from. I'll learn from uh, the fact that in, a, in your toughest times, you have to be solid, you have to be steady, you have to stay committed to your principles, you have to come in the right way every single day, regardless of a 20-point loss, two-point loss, doesn't matter, you, got, you have to remain who you are at your core. Um, you have to come in and work hard and inspire the young men and the people that you work with, whether times are good or times are bad. Um, that's important. It's important to be rock solid as the head coach. And hopefully I've done a pretty good job of that. I certainly know there's a lot of room for improvement on my end. And I, inter I certainly intend to, to learn from this experience. And hopefully it will make me a better coach one day. Mike, they say that you're never really sure if you're ready or not to be a head coach until you go through it. Yeah. And just going through those experiences, what was it like when you were been able to get this opportunity? Was it like shell, sh shell shock, you know, a lot of yeah. different things? You know, what was it like kind of going through it? Yeah, uh, roller coaster ride, you know, some, some big time ups, you know, um, some pretty, you know, pretty deep lows as well and everything in between. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been, you know, cool in terms of being in some of the venues. I imagine me sneaking into the picture with Denny Crum and Mike Krzyzewski. Right, like <laughs> just it's like a bystander just walking through, right? <laughs> so that was great, you know, coaching in the Dean Dome and doing some other things, and it's been a it's been a really gratifying experience, and again, something I learned a lot from going forward. Yeah. Do you have the Bahamas Victory cigar picture framed yet? You know what? I actually have a T-shirt. <laughs> Even better, you know. Uh, my wife, uh, she bought me. Uh, a mouse pad, you know, with, with my picture on there. So it's, it's amazing the things that pop up on the internet. You can just grab them, right? So, no, I, I've, got, I've had some good times. Bahamas obviously been the highest point, And would love to get one more of those victory cigars out, uh, if at all possible, here going forward. Anything else? All right. Try to cut the sweat out if you can. <laughs>